All right. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Rima Chatterjee, who will be telling us about cabling knots and overtwisted contact manifolds. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Molly. Um, thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk. Uh, so I'm going to talk about cabling knots in overtwisted contact manifolds, and this is a joint work with John Itnair, Hong Kim Min, and Anubhav Mukherjee. Okay, so what's the motivation? So we want to know that how topological operations affect a knot in a contact manifold. So when I'm thinking of a knot in a contact manifold, a contact manifold is a smooth manifold coming with a contact structure. So this knot is inheriting this geometric structure from the manifold. So we do some kind of topological operation on this knot and we want to know that how the geometric property is changing or it's still the same after doing the operation. So in particular, how the topological constructions are preserving the geometric property or not. And if there is any condition or any restriction, we have to put on that knot so that it preserves the geometric property. And for this talk, I'll focus in, for, uh, on overtwisted manifolds, knots in overtwisted manifolds. And I know that I haven't defined what is a contact structure, what's the overtwisted manifold, but in the next slide, I'll define them. Okay, so a contact structure on a three manifold is a nowhere integrable two plane field. So what is a two plane field? Is just think about a vector field. So on every point on the manifold, for a vector field, I have a vector. And the two plane field is on every point of the manifold, I have a, a plane. So it's a sub, sub bundle of the tangent bundle, basically. And what is a nowhere integrable condition? It means that in this three manifold, I can never find a surface where this two plane will be tangent everywhere. So in other words, a contact structure is something where these two plane fields are twisting at every point. So there are two types of contact structures. They are known as tight and overtwisted. So if we can find an overtwisted disk embedded in a manifold, then we call the manifold overtwisted. And here's a picture of the overtwisted disk. So as you can see that it's a shaded disk and this, these blue planes, these, this is the contact plane. And along the boundary of the disk, the contact planes are tangent. So if we can find such an over no, such a disk, we call it overtwisted, and this disk must be embedded. If it's immersed, then it's not an overtwisted manifold. Okay. So now what's a Legendrian knot? So there are two types of knots in a contact manifold. They are Legendrian and transverse, but I'll only focus on Legendrian. So a Legendrian knot is when a knot you can draw the tangent vector at every point, and that must lie in the contact plane. And here is a picture. So you take any point on the knot, draw the tangent vector, it must lie in the contact plane. Also, you can say that a Legendrian knot is a knot which lies on the contact plane. Okay. Um, now classification problem of Legendrian knots is a lot finer than the smooth knot type. Um, and there are two classical invariant of a Legendrian knot other than the knot type. So they are the thurston Benequin number. So, well, because um, we have a contact framing, this is coming from the contact structure, and then there is the cipher surface. So there's a cipher framing coming from that. And the difference is the thurston benefit number. So if the contact framing and the cipher framing matches, then the thurston benefit number is just zero. So if I just go back to the previous picture of the overtwisted disk, here, as you can see that the boundary of the overtwisted disk, this is an unknot, and the disk is the cipher surface. So the cipher framing and the contact framing in this case matches, and that's why the TB for this unknot will be zero. So our other definition of an overtwisted manifold is that if you can find an unknot with TB zero, then that will be overtwisted. Okay. So that's the first invariant. And the second one is the rotation number. This is the winding number of the tangent vector field with respect to a trivialization of the contact structure, again, coming from the cipher surface. So for both these two invariants, we need to, def uh, we need to have a cipher surface for the knot. So non-homologous knots, these invariants are well-defined. Okay, now there are two types of knots uh, or links in an overtwisted manifold. So think about this, that if I'm in an overtwisted manifold, there can be lots of overtwisted disks. 
So my knot can intersect every over twisted disc or can be disjoint from one of them. So if I remove the knot from the manifold, then either I'm getting rid of those over twisted discs or there is still one over twisted disc left after removing the knot. So I can have two types of um, complement. So a knot is loose if the complement is over twisted, otherwise it's called non-loose. And what we'll see that these non-loose knots are the interesting ones, which the, where the geometry is kind of changing after I remove the knot. So um, by Etna, there's a complete classification of uh, loose knots. So whenever I have a knot with, uh, whenever I have two knots with the same classical invariance, but there is an overtwisted disc in the complement, then there's a contact homomorphism, which takes one knot to the other. So this is done, like complete classification completely classified for every non-homologous knot type. Um, and this also, I extended it for links. So it doesn't matter how many components you have, as long as you have an overtwisted disk in the complement, they are completely classified by the classical invariance. The problem is with the non-loose knot. So whenever a knot has tight complement, so there is no overtwisted disk in the complement, then the classification becomes really, really hard uh, because we know that tight contact structures are really hard to classify. So it's kind of the same situation that we are trying to classify uh, tight contact structures on um, three manifold. Okay, but I'm not going into classi classification theorem. Uh, so my goal is to talk about the structure theorem. And by structure theorem, I mean that how a Legendrian knot is behaving uh, after we do some kind of topological operation on them. And we have these three topological operations. There's a connect sum, cabling, and whitehead doubling. Today I'll focus on cabling, but these two um, connect summing and whitehead doubling are also very uh, interesting. Okay, so how this started? Uh, Etna and Honda started uh, to study the connect sum operation of a Legendrian knot. So if you ha I have two Legendrian knots, and if I perform, perform the connect sum operation, just the contact connect sum, which is kind of the analogous to the, uh, the topological connect sum operation. Uh, we want to know that, okay, so we have a new knot. Uh, so the geometry of the new knot, it's like inherited from the, uh, the parent knots or it has something new. Um, it turns out that whenever we are in a tight manifold and we have two knots um, and we perform the connect sum, actually we can, it, it is not carrying any new information. So the new connect sum uh, is also, we can tell like how the geometry of the new knot is by just looking at the parent knots. And the study continued with Legendrian cables uh, by Etna and Honda and later by Legendrian satellites. But all of these results are in tight contact manifolds. So whenever we have no uh, overtwisted disk in the manifold. So this is the definition of a cable. By a cable, I mean the knot for a knot type is the isotopy class of the knot, uh, which has slope Q over P on the boundary of the solid torus that represents the underlying knot. And here are the pictures. These are the pattern on the uh, positive cable pattern and the negative one. And as you can see, there's a difference between this pattern um, because in the Legendrian front projection, we do not have the other crossing. So for the other crossing, I have to add these extra zigzags for that. And that's why it looked different. So when Edna and Honda studied knots in S3Z standard, this is the only unique tight contact structure on S3. They showed that the cable knots, um, the, the property of this, uh, the cabling is, uh, it, it relies on the uniform thickness property of a knot. Uh, very vaguely, uh, what is the uniform thickness property? For tight manifold, every knot type has a maximal thurston benefit number, that invariant. Uh, and we get a neighborhood, which we call the, for every knot type, which we call the max TV uh, neighborhood of a knot. And this is only true for tight manifolds. So if I take any knot in a tight manifold and take a neighborhood of the knot, and then I start thickening the neighborhood a little, little by little. And for a uniform thick knot, I will stop exactly at the max TV neighborhood and, and I cannot go any further. So that's, that's the stopping point. Uh, and they showed actually this is very, very important uh, in their theorem. So the statement of the theorem says that if I have a knot type, which is Legendrian simple, Legendrian simple means that it can be completely classified by the classical inv invariance. 
and it is also uniformly thick. In that case, the cable is also Legendrian simple. And in fact, it admits a classification in terms of the underlying knot type. So this is a very strong theorem. If I have this knot, Legendrian simple knot type, then all of its cable are also Legendrian simple. So I can just classify all the cables using this theorem. The only problem is that it has to be uniformly thick and not every knot is uniformly thick. And the first example that should be coming into your mind is what about the unknot? The unknot is not uniformly thick. So we cannot really talk about the classification of torus knots in terms of unknots because uh, this theorem doesn't follow there. So because uniform thickness property, the unknot doesn't satisfy the, the positive torus knots, they are not uniformly thick. So this is a very strong condition, which makes the theorem a little bit weaker. So that's why there has been a lot of work in this direction uh, where they try to relax this condition a little bit so that the theorem can be uh, stronger and can be applied to a lot more uh, knot types. Uh, but we are not concerned about these UTP because this is only for tight manifolds. Whenever we are in an overtwisted manifold, there is no maximal Thurston benefit number. It can be basically infinity. So we do not have um, any max TV neighborhood. So we do not have UTP. There's, there, uh, it doesn't make any sense to talk about UTP. So in overtwisted manifold, how does cabling work? Or can we find a theorem um, similar to this one? That's the goal. So if I'm cabling a loose knot, so if I have an overtwisted disk um, in the complement of the knot, um, this cabling is very easy in this case because I can just move the overtwisted disk away and then I perform the cabling and the cable is also away from the overtwisted disk. So it's also loose. So nothing interesting is happening. But when, when one tries to cable a non-loose knot, so when the complement is tight, then it becomes interesting. And I'll show an example why this is interesting. So let us take the non-loose unknot uh, in S3. Uh, now, Elish Burke and Fraser prove that you can only find non-loose unknot in this one particular overtwisted contact structure, which has half invariant negative one. Okay, so now we try to find a positive cable, say right-handed trefoil, and we can also find actually non-loose right-handed trefoil in the same contact structure. So fine. But now there exists no non-loose left-handed trefoil in the same contact structure. So when I'm performing a negative cable, something weird is happening there. So for some reason, the complement is becoming overtwisted. Okay. So this is our main theorem. It says that if I'm if we have an overtwisted manifold and a knot in there, and if the cabling slope is greater than the thurston benequin invariant. Then the cable, so whatever the standard cable is, I'm not going to define it. It requires like a um, lot of convex surface theory. So let's just forget about the standard cable. But uh, for any PQ cable of the, um, of the knot type, it's also non-loose. So the complement remains tight. And this is actually if and only if condition. So if my knot is non-loose, the cable will be non-loose. If the cable is non-loose, the knot has to be non-loose as well. Now, how the proof works. The proof depends on this machinery, which is known as the convex surface theory. Um, so in three-dimensional contact geometry, we have this very, very powerful tool, which is convex surfaces. Just look at the surface and that surface tell you that uh, the surface te uh, tells you that how uh, the contact structure is changing. Uh, and here we use a technique, which is known as a state transition technique. This is due to Honda and some bypass attachments. But I'll very vaguely explain like how this works. So if I have a knot which is non-loose, that means the complement is tight. Okay. Now I do, I take the cable of that knot and I assume that the cable is loose. That means there is an overtwisted disk in the complement of the cable. So if this overtwisted disk is in the complement of the knot too then we are done because the knot I started, my assumption is the knot has to have a, a, a tight complement. So that's not possible. So I have this overtwisted disk that must intersect the neighborhood of the knot in some way. So the state transition technique says that if I have a topological isotopy between two surfaces, I can make this topology like discrete and um, like 
break it into pieces and every two piece pieces must be related by this bypass attachment or or in other words in every uh, this bypass attachment i can reduce the number of the uh, intersection of the over twisted disc so first of all we have a topological isotopy of the neighborhood of the knot uh, where i take the knot which um, i take the torus neighborhood which intersects the uh, the over twisted disc and then it perform the topological isotopy and make it completely disjoint from the over twisted disc apply the state transition and uh, also i can say that okay so this topological isotopy i can convert it into a contact isotopy so it's stronger so what happens then if the over twisted disc becomes disjoint from the neighborhood of the knot that means the knot i started with is also loose it has a over twisted complement and that's the contradiction it cannot happen Uh, this is actually a very very long proof, and this re uh, requires a lot of machinery. So I'm not going into a uh, convex surface theory here, uh, but yes. Yeah, so this is this is strong because this is an if and only if condition. But here also you must notice here that the cabling slope must be greater than the Thurston Delphi number. This is very important. We need this. Uh, so for positive cables, okay, this works. What about negative cables? so it can happen that the cabling slope is less than equal to the thurston benefit number think about the negative cable um so how do we solve this so what works for positive cables it's not going to work for negative cables because the positive and the negative cables um behave very differently in contact geometry uh so how how can we like prove a, a similar theorem for a negative cable so we have to introduce some extra conditions so here uh, is our next theorem so we have a knot type and this we need two extra conditions so first is the knot has to be q over p minimally thickenable this is a strong condition um not every knot type is q over p minimally thickenable and for this one we also vaguely speaking so if i have a particular neighborhood is q over p it says uh, we have a dividing uh, curve on the neighborhood of the knot type which has slope q over p then we can always thicken it uh, so this is also not true for every knot type and this is another another condition we need that is the legendrian knot must have a non loose transverse push off so a transverse push off is a operation in contact geometry that whenever we have a legendrian knot i can perform some operation on it and get a transverse representative of the same knot type so like a legendrian knot is always lying on the contact plane a transverse knot is transverse to the contact plane so i can push the legendrian knot in a particular direction so that it becomes transverse to the contact plane because the contact planes are twisting uh so this transverse knot must also be non loose so the complement is still um, tight after doing this operation which is also not true for every knot type uh, for for un knot this is actually not true Uh, if you take an uh, un knot which is non loose having tight complement and you apply the this operation transverse push up it suddenly becomes loose uh, this is due to elish for fraser so but if these two conditions are satisfied then for q over p less than equal to thurston benefit number the cable will be non loose so the tight complement is preserved uh, but here we we don't like this in a way because we have two extra very strong condition for negative cables for positive cables it's like it's true for every positive cable as long as the cabling slope is greater than the invariant the thurston benefit invariant so we want to relax this condition a little bit so can we can we relax the condition now to relax the condition actually we have to pay some price and the price is that uh, this is a long statement you do not have to read this it's basically that uh, i do this cabling and right now i do not have any condition on the on the cable uh, on the knot type that it has to be this minimally thickenable it has to be this transverse push up non loose nothing but we have to land in a different contact structure so i am not fixing the contact structure right now in the previous case i fixed the contact structure i can get a negative cable in the same contact structure but right now i'm changing the contact structure and this is a work in progress so right now we do not have an idea that how to tell you that exactly which contact structure it will land in 
um, because uh, contact structures, this overtwisted contact structures, you can, this D3 invariant and D2 invariant, this tell you that which overtwisted contact structure it is, because they are basically um, homotopy, cla homotopy class of two plane fields, the overtwisted one, uh, resolved by Eliashberg. And this D2 and D3 are the obstruction classes, algebraic topology. So, but we don't know how to how to calculate the D2 or D3 and tell you that, okay, this is the different contact structure. This, it has this D3 invariant. Um, hopefully we can find a formula or something like that, but right now we don't have any. So finally, some questions. So what about other satellite constructions? Because other than cabling, we also have wider doubling, we have connect sum operation. So the first question is, of course, what about connect sum? Does it preserve non-looseness? And surprisingly, it doesn't. So, uh, and a very trivial example is the non-loose unknot. So we take two unknots, perform the contact connect sum, it's still an unknot. Uh, and I already mentioned that non-loose unknot lives in this um, overtwisted contact structure, which has half invariant negative one. Uh, and that, that's the only overtwisted contact structure un unknot can live in. And once you perform the connect sum, the, uh, the half invariant is additive. So it becomes negative two. And we know that a non-loose unknot cannot live in half invariant negative two. So contact connect sum is not preserving uh, non-looseness here. So, um, but here also, one thing we must note is that this is for unknots and unknots are very special. Uh, so we don't know that if uh, for any non-trivial uh, connect sum, if this is true or not. Uh, in general, so the answer is no. But uh, are there any condition uh, we can put on the not type so that it preserves this, uh, the complement, the tight, uh, tightness of the complement? Um, Ethnail has a conjecture that um, if the complement of the knot is universally tight, which is a very, very strong condition on the uh, contact structure, then it might be possible that the connect sum actually preserves the tightness. Uh, but uh, we don't have like any idea how to prove that or, or so. Um, also, white doubling is equally interesting because also there is this um, unknot example. You take the unknot, think about right hand, left-handed trefoil as the twisted white double, and the same thing happens. It becomes loose uh, after you perform the white double. So. Um, there are like lots of questions floating around in this direction and we don't know uh, uh, an answer to any of this. Uh, so, and I should stop here. Thanks for listening. All right, so let's thank our speaker. Wonderful, thank you so much. Any questions for our speaker? Uh, hi. Uh... I just want to ask for like a specific example or something. So like, so there it's like a very special one. It's like three, two cable of the right-handed trafoil. So it, like, is that one also special like in the over twisted? Which, uh, which one? So any, any cable of the, of the trefoil? No, it's, uh, so what's your convention for the PQ, so the P is longitude or the Q is longitude? Uh, P, uh, meridian Q longitude. Oh, uh, so I guess it's like, so like two, three cable of the right mm -hmm. hand trap. Two, so three cable why. of the right handed trefoil. Oh, so you are thinking of the, what happens when you perform this two, three cable of the right handed trefoil in over twisted contact structures? Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, we have, I mean, most probably it will not be transversely simple, like the tight one. In, in the tight one, this is the example of non-transversely yeah. simple, right? Most probably in overtwisted, that will also be true. Yeah, but we haven't worked on that. that that's um, that's a, a theorem we are thinking of uh, proving, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> 